Hello everyone, welcome back to Basilos TV. Please like, share and subscribe. In today's video titled Sweet Girl, I'll give you a more detailed explanation of the whole movie. I'll unravel the hidden secrets of the movie and the plot twist which we all didn't expect. Stay tuned and don't touch that dial. As we all know, Jason Momo is known for playing the fierce Carl Drogo in Game of Thrones as well as one of DC's most recognizable superheroes, Aquaman. But in Netflix's new thriller, Sweet Girl, he plays an everyday father, held bent on avenging his dead wife. At the beginning of Sweet Girl, we meet Ray Cooper, Momo, his daughter Rachel, Isabel Mest, and his wife Amanda, Adria Arjona, who has cancer, when a life-changing medication is soon to be available on the market. Big Pharma strikes, the CEO of Bow Prime, a competing medical manufacturing company, pays the new drugs manufacturer off to ensure Bow Prime continues making money. During a live televised press conference, Ray calls Bioprime CEO Simon Keeley, Justin Bartha, and threatens to kill him if his wife dies, since that new medication was essentially their last hope at a cure. Sadly, Amanda indeed dies, and Ray keeps true to his words. He set off on a mission to expose Bioprime's injustice and get revenge for his wife. However, there are even more sinister forces at play, and Ray and Rachel find themselves in a conspiracy that gets more wild at every turn. And at the end of the film, there is a major twist that changes the meaning of the movie entirely. Throughout the entirety of Sweet Girl, we watch Ray and Rachel as they try to uncover the truth about Bioprime's internal corruption. The pivotal moment of action takes place on the subway where Ray meets a reporter named Martin Bennett, Nelson Franklin, who claims to have information that will help him get justice for Amanda's death. The two meet and right after Bennett explains that Bioprime bribes people into covering their dirty work. He is killed by a hitman named Emma Santos, Manuel Gasha. Santos then attack Ray and Rachel, leaving them severely injured on a subway platform. Two years later, we catch up with Ray and Rachel as they continue their investigation into Bioprime's shady business practices as they do kicked boards all over town, uncovering the deep conspiracy. They are led to different people, Chairman V. Nod, Shah Raza Jaffrey, who ordered the hitman on Bennett, FBI agent Saramika Lexcore Davis, who Rachel secretly communicates with, and eventually Diana Morgan, Amy Brenman, the senator who is behind it all. When Ray and Rachel make it to Pittsburgh to confront Morgan, they are followed by the FBI who chase Ray to the roof of his stadium. Aside from the fact that Rachel is suddenly not there, we get another shocking piece of information when Agent Nika reveal it actually isn't Ray up on the roof at all. It's Rachel who has been the one hunting down the bad guys all alone ever since Ray died. Well, well, well. If you had a poor sweet girl after the major plot twist to collect your thoughts, you're not alone. Remember the fight towards the beginning of the movie where Ray and Rachel were left for dead on the subway platform. As it turns out, Ray did eventually succumb to his injury that day. Devastated by his death, Rachel uses her knowledge of martial arts and gymnastics to finish her father's mission herself while imagining the whole time that Ray is by her side. Although everyone else sees Rachel as herself, she views her actions through the lens of her father, imagining that he's still alive and killing the bad guys himself. When Agent Mika reveals the truth, we are shown the clip that were originally portrayed as Ray's action. Now with Rachel in his place, in the same outfits, taking the bad guys out one by one. It's a huge shock that makes the tragedy at the center of Sweet Girl all the more devastating. Aside from the plentiful action and butt kicking sequences, Sweet Girl exemplifies the strength of a family bond. Amanda's passing serves as a catalyst for Ray and Rachel who are so devastated by her death that their lives are drastically changed in multiple ways. They became almost obsessed with dedicating their lives to avenging her and their trauma is obvious throughout the film. Rachel's traumatized state of mind from losing her parents is also shown in the way that she imagines her father is still alive with her. When we realize that it's actually Rachel who has been kicking butt and taking names the whole time, you also realize that she's an orphan who is dealing with the horrible death of both her parents. The bond between the Coopers isn't just over because their lives are forever altered by violence and death. Rather, their love continues on in a new way 
as Rachel tries to finish the job her dad started. The ending of Sweet Girl is left fairly open as Rachel bought a plane, heads out into the world, leaving her painful memories behind. Although both Ray and Amanda are dead, it's unknown if Rachel has any remaining families she's able to live with for the foreseeable future or what's in store for her next. There definitely seems to be plenty of room for a Sweet Girl sequel, exploring Rachel's life as an adult or following her journey as she carves out a new life for herself. Mess also recently spoke to Screen Rants about her role in Sweet Girl and mentioned her own thoughts on a possible sequel. What I love more about Rachel is that she's equally as flawed and strong as Ray, her counterpart, she said, and there's nothing that I'd love more than a flawed hero. I think it creates an amazing story and it has potentials for having a sequel be about the backstory. When she gets to this point where she's so psychologically messed up from the trauma that she's endured that she has to pretend to be something else. Leave a comment below.